Minotaur. Hello and welcome to another episode of A Brief History. Today's episode, Paramore. Ready, set, go. Franklin, Tennessee, 2003. Vocalist Taylor Williams is offered a recording contract from Atlantic Records at the age of only 14 or 15. The label originally intended for Williams to become a pop artist, but Haley had other plans. For around this time, Haley was in the midst of forming an alternative rock band with her friends and fellow musicians Josh Farrow, Zach Farrow, Jeremy Davis, and Jason Bynum. Haley was very adamant about not being turned into a stereotypical top 40 pop star. She wanted the chance to show what her and her friends could do together as a band with their own original songs. Somewhat surprisingly, Atlantic Records president Julie Greenwald agreed to Haley's wishes and Thus, the band we now know as Paramore was born. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but for the sake of time, that's the best I can do. Paramore, whose name came from the maiden name of the mother of a friend of the band, was an alternative rock slash pop punk outfit that originally featured Haley Williams on vocals, Josh Farrow on lead guitar, Jason Bynum on rhythm guitar, Jeremy Davis on bass, and Zach Farrow on drums. At the time of their formation, each member of the band was still incredibly young. To put this into perspective, at the time of their first practice session, drummer Zach Farrow was 12. Due to their stylistic choices, Atlantic Records marketers felt it would be better for Paramore not to be attached to a major label at the start. So, in 2004, instead of signing to Atlantic, Paramore more signed to the Atlantic owned niche record label Fuel by Ramen. Not long after signing. Ah! Not long after signing this deal, bassist Jeremy Davis left the band due to personal reasons. The remaining four members of the band decided to go into the studio and record their debut record without him, basing much of the album's concept around Jeremy's departure. Jeremy left the wasted a good amount of time. Three weeks later, Paramore completed recording their debut record titled All We Know Was Falling and began touring to promote its release. For these touring efforts, Paramore employed bassist John Henry in the absence of Jeremy Davis. However, this replacement only lasted about five months before Jeremy reclaimed his role as bassist. With the original lineup back together, Paramore finally released their debut record on July 24th, 2005. All We Know Was Falling reached number 30 on the Billboard Heat Seekers chart, but singles from the album such as Pressure and Emergency failed to chart. During the promotion of the album, rhythm guitarist Jason Bynum was replaced by Hunter Lamb, who also ultimately left the band in 2007 to get married once again, leaving the band as a quartet as they prepared to record their sophomore album. This album, known as Riot, was released on June 12, 2007 and landed at number 20 on the Billboard Top 200 charts, effectively launching Paramore into the mainstream. Thanks to hits like Misery Business, That's What You Get, and Crush Crush Crush. Riot's success eventually earned Paramore a 2008 Grammy Award nomination for Best New Artist, although the award ultimately went to Amy Winehouse. Also, the band's newfound mainstream success allowed them to release their first ever live album, The Final Riot. The Final Riot contained both a CD and a DVD of the band's 2008 live performance in Chicago, Illinois, as well as a documentary film called The 40 Days of Riot, which addressed everything from touring and band dynamics to going platinum and the band's future. And their future future was indeed a bright one, for in October of 2008, a brand new Paramore song called Decode was released as the lead single off the soundtrack for the movie Twilight. This song was the band's second top 40 single and has since become one of their most celebrated tracks. But we can't really say the same for the movies now, can we? In early 2009, Paramore began to work on their third studio album. And for this album, they added a permanent second guitarist to the band named Taylor York, who actually joined the band as a touring member during the promotion of Riot. So for the first time in their career, Paramore was finally able to record an entire album as a full quintet. And their efforts eventually culminated in a far more mature take on pop punk music strongly showcased on their third record, Brand New Eyes. Released on September 29th, 2009, Brand New Eyes brought Paramore even more mainstream success, reaching number two on the Billboard charts and boasting the Grammy-nominated single, The Only Exception. However, not all was well in the Paramore camp. On December 18th, 2010, after an extensive amount of touring to support Brand New Eyes, it was announced that founding members Josh and Zach Farrow would be leaving the band. Josh Farrow confirmed and explained the separation in a controversial blog post, which made many negative claims that the rest of the band later addressed as being either irrelevant or insignificant. Since the departure, Zach Farrow has released music as part of the band Half Noise. In 2011, Josh Farrow began to form a new band with former Cecil Adore members Van Beasley, Ryan Clark, and Tyler Not the YouTuber Ward. This band was to be known as Novel American, and eventually Zach Farrow even got on board with the group. But in May of 2014, the project was scrapped, and the Farrow brothers began to work on a new, currently unnamed project, which is purported to feature Josh on guitar and vocals and Zach on drums. So Paramore was now left as just Haley, Jeremy, and Taylor. But despite having lost two founding members, one of whom was a key songwriter, Paramore was determined to continue touring and making music. Throughout 2011, Paramore released a total of four new tracks. The first of these tracks was called Monster, which was released as part of the Transformers Dark of the Moon soundtrack. The other three tracks, namely Renegade, Hello Cold World, and In the Morning, were released as part of what the band referred to as the Singles Club on their website. So having proved that they were just fine without the Pharaohs, Paramore set out to record their first full-length LP since the split. This album, simply titled Paramore, was released on April 5th, 2013, and was the very first Paramore record to hit number one on the Billboard charts. And two of its singles, Still Into You and Ain't It Fun, have become massively successful hits, seeing heavy amounts of radio play. In fact, the latter of those singles, Ain't It Fun, recently became Paramore's very first single ever to crack the Billboard Top 10. Approximately one year later, in March of 2014, Paramore hosted a four-day-long cruise called Parahoy. This cruise included band Q&As, karaoke, a beach day, and performances from Paramore, and multiple guest bands. Outside of Paramore, singer Haley Williams was prominently featured on B.O.B. 2010 hit Airplanes, as well as Airplanes Part 2 with Eminem. And more recently, Haley collaborated with EDM producer Zed for the 2013 single Stay the Night, which again, was incredibly well received. But one important thing to note with these collaborations is that Haley was always credited as being Haley Williams of Paramore. Accentuating a fact that Paramore fans have been proclaiming ever since the departure of the Pharaohs, Paramore is a band. While it is true that Paramore would just not be Paramore without Haley Williams, Paramore is not Haley Williams alone. Paramore at this point in history is Haley Williams, Jeremy Davis, and Taylor York. Sure, musical direction and lineups may change in the future, that's a given with any musical 
technical outfit, but one thing that will never change is that Paramore is not a Haley Williams solo project. Paramore is a band. And not only that, they are also my personal favorite band of all time. Thanks for watching, guys. DFTBA. You've just watched a brief history of Paramore. Thanks for watching. You're awesome. Bye. Bye. It's really hard to move forward as a group when there are people that aren't into it. They're not excited, they don't want to be there. Um, and so to know it to that level that they didn't want to be there was really tough. It, all, it, was, a, it was a friendship thing, you know? Yeah. All of us started off really young and started growing up and you go through a lot of changes anyways and being on the road and away from family mm -hmm. and this is your new family, you know? Yeah. The three of us are still here, we're not going anywhere.